Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue my look at how to synchronize and back up and you know basically send files to and from one NAS to another. In my previous video I showed you guys how to uh, back up your Synology to a QNAP NAS and now I want to show you it the other way around. Just in case you didn't catch that video what you're going to need for this is the following. One, on the Synology you are going to have to install the free program known as Hyper Backup. On the QNAP, you're going to need to install the program Hybrid Backup Sync. And on both NASes, you're going to need to make sure that the files that you want to send over are on a shared folder. So in the case of the Synology, I've created a shared folder called Test File Syn on the 218 Plus. And in the case of the QNAP, I've created a shared folder called Test Files QNAP. Both of them have got 35 gig of files, and what we're going to do is send the files from our QNAP over to the Synology via the network without using a PC in the middle to, file, to handle the files, which can be really time consuming and annoying to leave a computer on and it's prone to error. Um, other things we're going to do in this video is make sure you know what settings to change. So whether you're sending one way or another, just to play it safe, Make sure on both of them you head to their respect, respective control panels. And on the Synology, go to the control panel. Let's start from the beginning because it might go a bit difficult there. Go to the control panel. From there, go to File Services. And then go to R-Sync. Make sure you've enabled the R-Sync service and enabled an R-Sync account. Not hugely necessary, but just for the sake of ease. Make sure you create an R-Sync account with some details that you remember. In my case, I've created this as admin with the password as password. On the QNAP, likewise, to make things easier, you can go straight at the top here and just type in our sync. And from here, it will have some settings there in the background using hybrid backup sync, which we'll review later on. But that's not as necessary because we're gonna go onto those in a bit. So, in order to send files and folders from your QNAP to the Synology, after you've ticked all of those boxes and made sure all of those things are enabled, make sure you go first into Hybrid Backup Sync on your QNAP NAS. Make sure you know the location of the files and folders you intend to send. Once again, just like I showed you, go into R-Sync Server, and from R-Sync Server, do remember and make a note of that port number there, 873, the default. And make sure you've set up the username and password here. So again, just to make it nice and straightforward, have the same login for both of them, just to make it easier. So once again, admin and password. And make sure you have enabled synchronization between this and other devices. And if you do need to set a, a limit, just so make sure it doesn't soak up all of your network connectivity and all your bandwidth. You can change it there, but by default, there won't be any limit. So, next, we want to start our synchronization. So, go back into the overview, and from here, we want to select one-way sync. We want to synchronize from this QNAP onto this Synology. So, Go to one way sync. And if I had full screen of this, it's easier to see, but for now, create sync job. We want to do a one way synchronization and we want to sync local, that is your local NAS, to a remote location. When we click there, we want to click R sync. Click next. And from here, we start conducting the job. And again, as mentioned in my previous videos, there may be delays during the course of this due to the network connectivity between the two devices, and I'll skip forward over those dull bits. But this will take a fraction longer than this video implies. So, first, we've got a job that I set up earlier, but we want to create a brand new profile. We click Settings, and now we want to enter the details of this Synology. So first and foremost, we want that IP. So we'll copy that IP into there, get rid of the HTTP uh, colon forward slash, there's the IP. We want to keep that port ID, and now we want to have the login details for this NAS. We've entered those login details, and you can enable encryption if you so choose, but for now, this should be fine. We'll click test because this will let us know before we go through the trouble of setting this up whether it will work. 
As always, there is a slight delay on the network, so I'll fast forward. So, it's found the Synology NAS, and it's even done a quick test to let us know what the average speed of communication between these two NASs is going to be. So, we've conducted the test. Let's start setting up our R-Sync between the QNAP and the Synology. There's the job that we've created, R-Sync 2. First, we have to select the folder on our local NAS, that's the QNAP. So we're going to select that test file folder we created earlier. Now we have to select the destination folder. And again, when you click this arrow button, it will take a while for the options to appear. So don't become impatient. Sometimes it can take up to a minute or two for these options to appear. So what we'll do is we're going to fast forward until when it finds that Synology folder uh, database. But again, this can take a while, so I'm going to skip forward. But don't just quit out because it hasn't given you the folders immediately. So for those that are keeping an eye on the clock down here, you've probably seen that quite a few minutes have gone by. Luckily, we've now got access to the Synology folders directory. We're going to select the test files folder on the Synology. And now we've created the source folder on our QNAP to go to the source folder on our Synology. We click add, and now we've, we've got the actual job details. We can arrange for that synchronization to be immediate, but for now what we're gonna do is just set the job up so I can show you on the main list what it looks like. And of course we can do the schedule so we can have that happen every single day. And there's other options too. You can even set it up that if there's a problem during the job, you can then uh, let the task restart itself if there's an error rather than error and not move forward further. Again, there are other options as well where you can go through the different policy decisions and that's that one that I just mentioned there about abnormality during the course of the uh, synchronization. Moving forward, we're gonna click apply and it will now create this job inside the hybrid backup sync application. And again, during the Synology here, we've got that unit just being itself there. And given that it's never happened, that this is a manual sync, because I didn't set up a schedule, we can just click sync now, and it will begin the synchronization of these devices. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a minute or so, then we're gonna head over to the Synology to make sure that it's created these folders and that the synchronization will take place. There's no way it's gonna be completed immediately because this is 35 gigabytes of data. And as seen by the test, the test has only given us about 100 megabits, uh, megabytes per second. And that's it. That is as straightforward as it is to synchronize a Synology and a QNAP together and indeed to send files from a QNAP onto a Synology NAS. There's test files in and there's test files QNAP. Again, the synchronization is completely completed. I had to stop it early because it was slowing down the, band, uh, the network there in the background, but it really is that straightforward. Obviously, the backup speeds will differ depending on the amount of data you're sending over, and I will be doing further videos on how to synchronize these two big NAS brands, as well as synchronizing some other brands as well. If you've got any recommendations or queries about different kinds of backup, do let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.